Well, if you're in the valley and you don't know what to do, call upon King Jesus. He'll deliver you, King Jesus. Won't you hear me when I pray? I'm down here in trouble. Send an angel by my way. Now, if you're sick and afflicted and you don't know what to do, call upon King Jesus. He's a great physician too, King Jesus. Won't you hear me when I pray? I'm down here in trouble. Send an angel by my way. Now, if you're in the valley and you don't know what to do, call on the name of Jesus. He's God of the valley too, King Jesus. Oh, won't you hear me when I pray? Lord, I'm down here in trouble. Send an angel by my way. They locked old Paul in the prison long about the midnight hour. He began to call on the name of Jesus and he sent the fire, King Jesus. Won't you hear me when I pray? Lord, I'm down here in trouble. Send an angel by my way. Give Jesus a hand clap. To you, Jesus. To you, Lord. To you, Jesus. To you, Jesus. Thank you. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Preach on two churches this morning. There's two churches ever since time, and you can approach this scripture so many different ways. But ever since Abel and Cain, there's been two. Take it all, all the way back. Had just just been a busy week. Been a just had so I couldn't go to sleep last night. I was working on my message. But David coming on the way to nine. I was working on it. Ten eleven. I was working on it. Twelve about one o'clock. I told Sheila. I said about one thirty this morning. I said, Well, I think I've I can uh, I've got everything ready. And uh, got up this morning, came to prayer, and got back home. And I just laid all that aside and started all over. I just got this this morning. I just, uh, Lord, please anoint me this morning. Please anoint me. Hallelujah. Lord, please anoint me. Please anoint me. Then Renee comes along, picks all these scriptures. I really feel like I got a fresh word from the Lord for somebody. Tabitha and Jeff, they drove two and a half hours. Enemies hit her nerves. She needs a miracle. Some of us just come to be in church. Some of us, we're desperate. So even if you don't feel good today, get with me. We need the Lord to come down. We need a, we need somebody needs help today. Just we need the Lord to pass by. Just need the Spirit of the Lord to show up and Him to visit. It's an honor to have Doug and Phyllis with us today. Give them a hand clap. What an honor. What a blessing. You don't have to follow me everywhere. I'm going to start reading in 1 Samuel eleven fifteen. First pastor I want to talk about is a man named Saul. Saul's names in the Bible, the, word, the words in the Bible 352 times refers to three different Sauls. To this King Saul, his name's in the Bible about, I think I counted 200 and, or 325 times. So he's a, he's a man that's important in the scriptures. First, we find him all through this book here. <clears throat> and all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. They sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And our Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. This was where the old prophet had done came to him, talked to him, told him where the donkeys were at one time, give him a word. 
He'd struggle with his call, with his anointing. We can call him king. I'm going to let him be a pastor this morning. He's a leader of people. This is where he accepts his call, and he says, I'll do this. The people are with me. I'll do this. He wasn't just accepted the people. He had a gift from God in 1 Samuel 10 and 11. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. He had a gift of prophecy. He prophesied. He had a touch of God or anointing of God or presence of God upon his life. He was more than just an just a average man. He was a man that had the presence of God. Then the people said one to another, What is this that has come unto us of the sons of Kish? You saw also among the prophets. 1 Samuel 14 and 35, this stood out with me. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord. This same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. They built the first automobile, and if they'd never built another one, they wouldn't call it the first. They just said they built an automobile. When it says first here, it lets me know he built other altars later. There was a time he was a praying man. There was a time he sought God. There was a time he offered sacrifices. There was a time he followed God. There was a time he wanted God. There was a time he wanted the presence of God. He, he had the biggest church in town. His budget was unlimited. I tried to find facts on what Israel was worth at that time, just unlimited measure. Servants without number had anything you wanted. They, they would, it's, all, it's almost like a tie. They would take a percent because Samuel told him, he said, you don't want a king. If you do, he'll have to get a percent of your lands and your taxes and everything to support the kingdom. They said, we want a king. So he was a, his, he was a, he was a church that had unlimited resources. He, he, was, he was a church that had unlimited anything he wanted to do. He had the... Uh, Ability to do with it. Uh, I read about some of these big churches. Some of them working on uh, 114 million, 250 million, 400 million budgets. One in California working on that kind of budget went bankrupt because too many jets and too many houses down on the beach. It's a shame what's going on in the name of Jesus in America. It's pitiful. It's pitiful. I don't even, I, I could preach a whole message on Saul's church. I just want to talk about it a little bit. But there come a time when God looked down and the guy quit praying. Friend, if you keep praying, you won't mess up. If you'll just keep praying, if you'll just keep praying, if you just keep praying, if you just keep praying, if you just keep seeking the Lord. But there come a time in 1 Samuel 15 and 26, and Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return to thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Charles said some hard statements, but he spoke some truth. I'm afraid some of these, these preachers are standing there, and I'm afraid they're lying. We got, we got one preacher, got one of the biggest churches in America, and he said, I refuse to let anybody come to my services and feel condemned. I refuse. He said, my job is to motivate people and encourage people. That, that, that's the job of the motivative speaker. That's a business. That's a work. The job of the preacher is to preach the Bible. The, the job of the preacher is to cry out against sin, to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. If I don't upset you every once in a while, I am not much of a preacher. If I, don't, if I don't dig into some of your past doctrine and if I don't make you mad a little bit and you say, well, that's not what my mama taught me and that's not what my daddy taught me. If I don't upset you every once in a while, I am not much of a preacher because there's nobody in this room, that including me, including my 82-year-old day, there's nobody that I know that's walking in 100%. We've all got some stuff to learn. Could I have an amen? No, I am not much of a preacher. I don't care how long you've been. If I, only te if I don't upset your doctrine every once in a while, you have to go back and say, well, you know, this ain't what I've been taught, but I need to take this back to the Bible and see am I following the ways of man or am I following the word of God? To them who are in. Somebody say in. There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So that tells me I can walk with Christ and be in the flesh. I can walk with Christ and be in condemnation. But if I'm in Christ, somebody don't hear me right now. If I'm in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. Mm. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any, for 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, oh, all things, all things are become new. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, if any, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hallelujah. Can, can I come to where you are? I now, I now I've got about 75% with me. Other 20, I'll make you mad or glad. How, if you're not living right, could it be that you're not in Christ? Could it be that there's areas of your life you've not surrendered yet? Could it be there's parts of your life you don't want to let go of yet? All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus I freely give. In, in, in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This is a shouting one right here, John 15 and 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. I'm so afraid a lot of people are carrying Jesus. But are you in Jesus? Is he in you? Are you in him? Christ in you, the hope of glory. You don't get the church. You don't get the name by joining a church or getting preacher's license. You got to be born into the name. I got the name when I inherited it. I was born into the family. You've got to be born again. Second, First Samuel seventeen eleven. Somebody write that down. When Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. He forgot the power of the name. He forgot the power of the. Get on out of here, devil. We got a name. Get on out of here, depression. We got a name. You lust and fear and powers that's trying to destroy lives. You get out of here. Have the blood, the name of Jesus. I wish somebody say that. Get on out of here. Sickness and diseases. Hallelujah. The blood, the name of Jesus. But where two or three are gathered together in my name. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Little old man had been laying there crippled. Acts 3.16, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You need to start praying in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We don't need to just use vain repetitions or just argue with the devil or argue with Thing. We need to take authority in the name of Jesus. We need to stand our ground in the name of Jesus. We need to pray and believe that he's going to move in the name of Jesus. We need to pray and realize I have authority in the name of Jesus. I have power in the name of Jesus. Says, These up. signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. Don't argue with devils. Cast them out in the name of Jesus. Take authority in the name of Jesus. Somebody say that name out loud. Jesus. Somebody say it again. Jesus, I'm talking about being in the name. The power of the name. Philippians 2 and 9. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Wherefore God has highly exalted him which is above every name. My daddy was working in Blairsville, Georgia, Campbell's pepper plant. With a, the old pepper plant where they'd sell it to Campbell's Soup. Bell peppers. Preaching revival, working third shift, not sleeping much. And he, said he, don't, he, said, he still says he don't know if it's a dream or trance or a vision. But he said he went off into this. And he said he went over into Revelations where they were seeking, trying to find some worthy. Just one that was worthy. Loose the seals and open the book. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And he said he heard him call John Wynn and he wasn't worthy. And he said he heard great preachers of renown. They called their name and none was worthy. He said they started in the Bible and they called Moses and Abraham and Jacob and none was worthy. Mm. They looked on down through time and they found Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and none was worthy. They found Apostle Paul and a Peter and a James and a John and none was worthy. He said, then he heard another voice come in and somebody said the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Would somebody say that name out loud? Hallelujah. We found one that is worthy to loose the seals and open the bubaribaste. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. There's an anointing in here. Anybody recognize that there's authority in here today? You're not some little toy for the devil to play with. You're, you're not some little imp for the devil to torment trouble. But you, 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 you can't fight him with your strength. You can't fight him with Saul's armor. Get off your religious armor and pick up that name. Hey, 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 hey. That's a revelation. Saul wasn't brave enough to fight him. He found a little old preacher it was. And he said, well, put on, our, put on our, our, our doctrine and our code of ethics and our, uh, our creed and our denomination. Put this armor on. They said, I'm not proof this thing. But I know the power of the name. <clears throat> I was back there just that barren line. I didn't have all this religious stuff. But I had that name. I was back out that old barn. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus. They said they start, somebody said the name of Jesus, and he said, Heaven stood silent. He said, One was found worthy to open the seals, to loose the book. Before, before telephones, before paved roads and automobiles, a little old godly couple had to go a long ways to work. Baby got sick. Dad's gone. Out the end of an old dirt road. Baby sick, fever. Mama tells later, baby got died. Baby died cold. And no life. She cried and she cried and she cried and she prayed and prayed and prayed. She said, I got that baby and I went out on the porch. She said, something got a hold of my heart. I heard the preacher preach and I got that baby and I went out and wrapped that baby on the porch and that baby had lost its color. It was dead. It was cold. She said, I didn't have another prayer. I didn't feel a whole lot, but I was sitting rocking that baby and I'd say, in Jesus' name. In the name of my head, boy, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And that little old mama testified, and she said, in the hour's time, that baby life came back into that child. Hallelujah. There's a name that's bigger than death. There's a name that's bigger than fear. There's a name that's bigger than torment. There's a name that's bigger than your storm. The devil's run over you long enough, pull the name out. Hallelujah. The devil's walked on you long enough, get the name out. You've been a Afraid long enough, get the name out. You've been beat down long enough, get that name out. You've been discouraged long enough. You've lived in torment long enough. He's backed you against the wall. He's threatened to destroy you, to break you. Hallelujah. Pull out the name of Jesus. Bind that devil in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak life into your circumstance. Hey, hey. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Put me on camera one. Got a call this week from a little woman three weeks from getting her ordination to be a high priestess. Mama was a high priestess witch. Grandma was a high priestess witch. She said, I'm afraid. She said, if they knew I was talking to a preacher, you're the first preacher we've talked to. We never touched the Bible. We don't watch religious program. It got on your station, and we couldn't change it. We watched it for four days. We don't know what's going on. She said, I'm afraid they'll hurt us. Little woman, little woman, there's a power greater than your witches. There's a power greater than your powers of hell. There's a power. If any of my little Billy's friends are watching me, there's a name greater than Ali. There's a name greater than Muhammad. Hallelujah. 
Finney, my other little friends, there's a name greater than Buddha. There's a name greater than Hare Krishna. There's a name above all your gods. There's a name greater than the Virgin Murray. There's a name greater than the Pope. And it's at the name of Jesus. I said, it's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I can stand here and shout today. I've, I've been shouting this morning and feel chill, but this is one scripture that's going to cost me if the, if the Lord tarry. If not, John Mark, this scripture could cost you. But right now, the government don't mind me preaching there's power in the name of Jesus. They just don't want me to say and there's no other power in those other names. And sooner or later, they're not going to come and tell me, Anthony, when you can't preach the name of Jesus, they're not going to tell me you can't do that. Well, there's too many of us. We're too great. Well, there's too many of us. But what they're going to say, you got to allow all these other names or we'll lock you up. We'll take your everything. We'll shut your door. And that's what it's going to cost us. And we're going to have to look them in the face and say, sir, I must tell you, there's a name that's above every name. There's only one name. There's only one door to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. And it's through the name of oh, somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody, I said, there's a name that's above every name. There's one name. I will not accept other names. I will not sell out for their favor. I will not sell out for their benefits. I love this name. I'm not ashamed of this name. I'm not afraid to preach this name. I've lost friends because I preach this name. Preachers have cut me off because I preach this name. I've had to wipe tears. I've been laughed at because I preach this name. I've been mauled because I preach this name. I've had doors closed because I preach this name. And I've given up too much to look back now. I'm going to keep preaching. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only door. Hey, 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 hey. I never talk about it. Never mention You folks have been around me, some of you, 12 or 13 years. I've been offered salaries. I've been offered positions in organizations. I've been offered churches with, with, with income, triple anything I've ever had. If I would just back off a little bit. But I'm not for sale and I can't back off. Hallelujah. I was raised eating soup beans. If it goes back to it, I'll keep preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far to give up now. Hallelujah. And it's not just I love it. My soul's at stake. Sheila's soul's at stake. The little lambs that follow me, our souls are at stake. I can't let go of this name. I can't sell out this name. I can't compromise on this name. I'll work with you on a lot of things, but I'm not workable on this. I'll work with you. I'll bend my back. I'll pray. I'll fast. I'll seek God, but I'm not movable on this. You can't come in here and worship me and believe in Ollie. You can't come in here and worship with me and just believe Jesus is one of. You, you may love Oprah. Oprah, you're wrong. Miss Oprah, you're a liar. There's not a hundred ways to heaven. There's not a thousand. Oprah stood, Oprah stood on national TV and she said, she said, you, you folk are wrong. Jesus is just one door to heaven. Oprah, you're wrong. Jesus is the only door to heaven. Gee, I know, I know you build orphanages and I know you give millions of dollars, but if you give your body to be burned and you don't believe this word, it's still not going to take you to heaven. There's one door to heaven and his name is Jesus. There's one way to heaven and his name is Jesus. Mr. President, Mr. President of the United States of America, you can't kiss the Pope's ring. You can't go to these other nations and bow down at their feet and serve their gods and come back here and tell us you're a Christian. Hallelujah. And there's only one door to heaven and his name is Jesus. Somebody, I wish somebody would say Jesus in this house. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Whatever your sickness is, I wish you'd call it out and say you've got to bow. Hallelujah. If drug addiction's trying to get your little girl, I wish you'd say you've got to bow. If rebellion's trying to get your child, I wish you'd call it by its name. It's saying you've got to bow. If lust is trying to tear your family up, I wish you'd call it by its name. It's saying you've got to bow. And if sickness is tough, 
touching you. I wish you'd call it by its name. Say you've got to bow to the name of Jesus. If you can call its name, it has to bow. If it has a name, it has to bow. I wouldn't embarrass you, but if you're fighting fear and it's tormenting you, I'd, I'd command that thing to bow to the... Hallelujah, there's an anointing in here. There's an anointing in here. Whatever's tormenting your mind and your nerves, I wish you'd take authority over it right now and say you'll have to bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Neither is our salvation any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name. No other name. No other name. No other name. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. This is a good rule of thumb. If you can't do it in the name of Jesus, don't do it. I'll preach and never say a word. If you can't do it in the name of Jesus, don't do it. You're being hard, preacher, friend. The Bible's hard. Take up your cross and follow him. Take up your cross and follow him. Take up your cross and follow him. If you have to slip and drink and you can't do it in the name of Jesus, you probably ought to not do it. If you have to slip and do stuff and you can't do it in public in the name of Jesus, you probably ought to not do it. If you can't do it in front of your children, you probably ought to not do it. If you can't do it in front of your husband, you probably ought to not do it. If you're not comfortable the church folk knowing about it, you probably ought to not do it. But somebody praise him a little bit. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's warm in here, but I feel a cold wave. I want you to walk without condemnation. I want you to be able to speak that name and demons tremble. I want you to be able to speak that name and angels stand in assignment. I want you to be able to preach that name. And there's an excitement in heaven that God's going to answer your prayer. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Go ahead and tell somebody. He made me mad, but I think he's right. Some are some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him in the name of the Lord. Anointing him in the name of the Lord. So I'm persuaded it's not just pouring olive oil on you. It's when we anoint you and obey the scriptures and we speak the name of Jesus over you. I believe that sickness has to bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name above all nations beginning at